Hi, welcome back. My name is Amrita and I'm excited to talk to you about aperture settings today. When to use what aperture and when you should pay attention to changing those aperture settings for certain kind of imagery. Let me start by explaining what aperture is. Now it's one of the three main settings on your camera amongst ISO and shutter. Think of it as that tiny hole in the middle of your lens that lets light come in. Now think about it. The smaller the hole, the less of the light that comes in. The larger the hole, the more the light there is. Now it's also denoted by something called f-stop. A number that's like f2.8, f5.6, f22 and so on. In this case, the larger the number, the smaller the hole is going to be. But the smaller the number, the wider the hole is going to be. So let me explain that with an example. When we say f1.4, it means that the hole is going to be super wide, which in turn lets a lot of light enter into the lens. But when we say f22, we're talking about a really small hole that lets very little light in. Why is this important? It's important because of the creative control and freedom it gives you while you make images. To understand the role of aperture in photography, it's important to understand two things depth of field and plane of focus. Depth of field in your image is essentially what signifies how much of your frame is in focus and how much of your frame is blurry or blurred out. We can achieve a shallower depth of field, otherwise known as DOF, where only a small part of your image is in focus by using small apertures like f1.4, f1.8, 2, f2.8 and so on. But if you want to achieve a more uniform frame where, you know, it's important to keep a majority of your frame in focus, for example, when you're photographing a group of about 10 people, then I would use really small apertures like f8, f11 and so on, so as to get everybody in focus. The second part is the plane of focus, which refers to the exact point in your image that will be in sharpest focus. Now, the plane of focus lies parallel to your camera sensor. Now, let me explain this better with the help of an example. Okay, meet my friend. So you're taking a picture of me and my best friend here, Mr. Teddy, where we're both right next to each other and you've got your focus on Mr. Teddy here. Now, if I were to stand slightly behind the Teddy and, take, and you have to take the picture, if your focus is here, and if your aperture is really, really wide, which is say f1.4, f2, there are very high chances that I will be blurred out or out of focus. Now, the only thing you can do is have your subject move forward. So the two of us are on the same plane of focus and both of us will be in focus at wide apertures too. Now, imagine if there were three to four people standing here and we're all in different planes. The only way to get all of us in focus is to actually increase your aperture number, which is essentially going to a smaller aperture number like f8, f5.6 to get all of us in focus, even though we're on different planes of focus. Does that make sense? Another factor to keep in mind while choosing your aperture setting is to see if the background in your image has any relevance or not. I mean, is it adding any value to your image? Now, I personally like to shoot with a really wide aperture when I'm working with children and I'm going with a very lifestyle approach because it gives me a lot of dreamy bokeh in my pictures, also helps me tell a better story. But this may change drastically if I'm doing a commercial shoot where I'm shooting, say, a, a line of clothing where I want to get everything in focus and then I'm obviously working with higher aperture numbers here. I hope this video helped you understand aperture better and how to use it right in different scenarios. I'd love to see how you use your aperture settings in your pictures, so don't forget to tag us whenever you upload those pictures. Till then, see ya!